let's see. I think this thing is working. Let's see, live. Okay, cool. And all right, cool. If you, all right, let's see. Let me just mute this. I think this thing is working. If you guys can hear me and see me, just uh, drop some comments in the box. Let me know that you're with me. I'll give it a minute here. Um, hey, okay, cool. So Holly's with us. All right, so let's see who else. All right, cool, okay, so I see a couple of you. <laughs> Gabe, you're like, you're like the new biggest fan, I think. I love that uh, the video that you shared on the uh, on your page about the pendulum with your wife, and uh, yeah, super super happy, man. It looks like a lot of that stuff is really really resonating with you, which is really awesome. All right, cool. We'll give it one more minute here, and then I'll uh, I'll fire this off. <laughs> okay, awesome. Just close this. All right. All right, cool. So, um, <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, many, many more of those. So, I wanted to do a short one. Guy's actually traveling right now. He's, um, I think he's on an airplane or maybe just landed uh, going from Colombia to Panama. And I wanted to share with you guys a little bit of kind of what's been swirling in my mind. And if you guys have any questions about the experience that we just uh, took our top clients to in Colombia, um, if there's anything specific that you want to ask or want to know about, uh, please just drop it in the comment box. I, I'd love to hear about it. Um, in any event, I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit uh, of what it's been like, uh, both the you know, out there, amazing. I, I call this uh, what's life, what's living love like on the fringe. Um, and the reason I said that is because, you know, I shared that thing with uh, Gabe, which was the pendulum. And um, he really loved it and took it to heart and uh, then posted a video with his partner on using it and things like that. And that's just, you know, to me, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there's, so many other things that uh, people, I believe, are just, what's the best way I can say this? People are afraid. Maybe afraid is not the exact word I want to use. People are resistant, maybe that's quite a better word, to some of the phenomenas that are possible in this world. And I think the reason that is, is mostly because we live in a culture. Uh, and what I mean by culture is we have a society, we have friends, we have colleagues, we have peers, we have families, all of which have a very, very specific way on what is real, what is not real, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. And it doesn't matter how far out there you are and how much of a fringe dweller you believe you are. Um, hey, Yasmin, welcome. Yasmin's another one who's been uh, quite actively following us of late. So welcome. Um, and you know, it doesn't matter what that level is. If you if you want to think about it this way, is we all, every single one of us, live in a box. Every one of us, myself included, live in a box. What do I mean by that box? It's not a box where you physically walk into walls. It's not a box like a room or a, you know a cardboard box that you can see. Think of it more of like a invisible box. More of like an electrocuted fence that you would set up for your dog, okay? And whenever you, hey Nick, what's up buddy? Hey Cold Dip. Um, whenever you go out and want to experience something like believing in a you know swinging pendulum or going out to the jungle and taking plant medicine or experiencing some of the things that I'm gonna share with you here um, while on plant medicine, guess what you come up against? That invisible wall. Because there's so many things happening around every single one of you every single day that you cannot see. And you cannot see them simply because of the fact that you believe those things do not exist. 
So whether it's, and let's go real crazy out here, whether it's aliens or ghosts or entities or energies or grid lines or auras or whatever it is, some of you are like, ooh, I see energy lines and I see grid lines. And some of you are like, those people are fucking weird. And it's just because of those things that we basically cap ourselves. Now, look, I'm not saying that capping yourself is a bad thing. I don't want you to hear this conversation as, you know, living in a box capped is bad. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just hoping that this conversation opens your mind to the fact that there are things out there that are unbelievable, that when you see them, your eyes and brain cannot comprehend what is happening at this exact moment. And if I ask all of you and drop them in the comment box, if you got them, the last time this happened to you, and I'm more than certain that this has happened to you, where something in your life happened where it was so, you even say, oh my God, it was so unbelievable. That's how you start the story. When we say it's unbelievable, that basically means that in our box, in our invisible box, that which just happened does not really fit. It is beyond the level to which we believe we can accept and receive certain things in our lives. Now, when you go to, <laughs> Leanna is saying Saturday, awesome. Like it happens all the time, right? It, it's, it's almost this experience of like, it's like piercing the veil almost. And you just get a peek to what's on the other side. Uh, one of our mentors way back in the day used to say, you know, if you walk to your refrigerator and you open the refrigerator door and inside the refrigerator, instead of your normal food and everything, you all of a sudden saw the Grand Canyon, you would fucking freeze. You would be like, oh, that's so cool. You'd be like, holy shit. And you'd close the refrigerator door real fast, right? Because it wouldn't be a concept. In fact, um, the tsunami that happened, I don't know how many years ago at this point, probably like five. But the tsunami that happened People stood dumbfound watching this wall, a hundred foot plus wall of water come at them and their body and mind wasn't like, holy shit, run the fucking other way. It just stood there in amazement, like, because there was no concept of a 150 foot wall of water moving towards you is bad and should kill you. There was no concept in the mind for that. And so... I'm not bringing up these tragedies as like, these are the experiences. I'm saying these things on the good side happen all the freaking time. And so the first thing I'd like to just share is, what if you live life open to the fact that the unbelievable is believable? So what I wanna do is share with you just a couple of stories, one from last year's Columbia experience and one from this year's Columbia experience. Uh, that in my world stretched what I believed was possible for myself as a human being. So last year, um, I don't remember during which ceremony, but it ended up, this was hours really after Guy and I had taken medicine and we're sitting out in the, in this garden, which, you know, for, for those that, that went with us, um, uh, we, we all decided last year that it was the Garden of Eden and this year people walked in and absolutely validated that so, so much so. So anyway, I'm, I'm laying there in the grass and Guy is laying down next to me and my eyes are kind of up in the sky and partly closed and um, Guy was sitting next to me and all of a sudden I kind of feel and, and something that you, know, you experience, especially when you're on plant medicine, is all of your senses get super, super heightened. So some people start to see energy. Some people like me start to feel energy where you can actually feel the vibration. Um, this past, this, this just a week ago, I actually got to the point where my hands were so sensitive that it actually felt like I could pet the air. Like there was a, a feeling and a texture to the air. And just because you don't experience that on a normal basis doesn't make it not real, right? And so this story that happened last year really had me experience this in a really big way. So guy kind of falls over and I just kind of hear him panting. And I, all I do with my eyes closed, I just stick out my, so he's to the right of me. I stick out my right arm um, to face him just so that I can feel some of that energy coming off of him. And as I feel the energy coming off of him, I start to kind of see in my mind's eye what guy looks like, even though my eyes are fully closed. Okay. 
and I kind of start to like scan his body with my arm. And as I'm scanning, I feel different things through the air. Like I feel like different heat patterns and different things. And all of a sudden I see in my mind's eye guy laying on his side. So his back is to me and uh, kind of like in a, in a little bit of a fetal position. Now this is, again, I don't see this with my eye. My eyes are literally facing up and closed. And I do this and all of a sudden I see that his back is no, there's no skin on his back. His back is actually clear. And what I start seeing is these little black marbles, little black dots. And all I do is I, I start like flicking them like you would, you know, if you found, I don't know, something in like hair for someone, I just start flicking them and I see them literally flick out of his body. And at this point, I'm just going, what the fuck is happening? Like, this can't be real. And all of a sudden, I hear this message loud and clear. It says, get up and use both your hands. So now at this point, I, I'm lying down. So I get up to go to my knees and I open my eyes and Guy's back. Guy is in the exact position that I had seen him in my mind's eye. And the freakier part is that his back, even with my eyes open, is fully translucent. And the same thing that I was seeing in my mind's eye, I am now seeing with my eyes wide open. So much freaked me out that I was like, this can't fucking be. This can't be. And I keep closing my eyes and I keep rubbing them. And I keep closing them and opening them. And I am literally seeing the exact same thing. His back is translucent. And I can see muscle fibers and I can see these little black things. And I'm just like, what is happening? Now, as this is happening, I'm starting to realize as I'm telling myself, I don't believe this, I don't believe this, that that's probably not the thing I want to be saying to myself. Because if this is something just got activated inside me, right? This ability to heal someone and see things in a way that I've never seen them before, just because it never happened before, doesn't mean it's not believable. All it simply means is I have never yet experienced that. And this was my time to experience it. So I'm sitting there and I'm going, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. And as I'm doing this, I can start seeing clearer and I can start doing all of these things. So I'm now flicking all these black things from, from guys back. And all of a sudden I put my hand, I like scanned my hand over his body and my hand stops and it stops kind of over his, I guess you'd call it like kidney or liver. I don't know, something, something in that area. And my hand literally goes and just like stops, gets locked in. And all of a sudden it gets really, really hot. And I just feel tons and tons of energy just flying into my hand, like almost like I'm vacuuming stuff out of his body. Now, the whole time guy has no idea that any of this is happening, right? I'm, he's fetal position, facing away from me, eyes closed, going through his experience, nothing, okay? I don't even know if he's feeling what I'm doing, but I'm just doing it, right? Because something said like, do this. So I put my hand over it and it just gets really hot, really hot, really hot. So much so that at some point, like all I want to do is move my hand away. So I literally put my other hand on top of this one and I'm just like forcing it down to hold it over his body as, as much as I can. And it gets to the point where I can't, no, I can no longer use the other muscle in my hand to hold it. And in that moment, my hand literally shoots up and I feel this massive black ball come out of his body and into my hand. Now, as far as all this is happening, I'm still, I'm in the state of like, holy shit, wow, right? I believe, I believe, I believe, because I'm really trying to be in this experience and not be like, this is just, a, this can't be real, you know? As I pull this last piece instantly, and I'm not talking like three seconds after or literally the second that I pull this black marble out of guy's body, he jumps up and goes, ah! in the exact second. Now at this point, I'm thinking like so much stuff is happening in my body and in my brain because I just did one of the coolest things I've ever done in my entire life. And the experience was fully validated in reality by someone actually having, like, like as I pulled it out, he comes back to life basically. And I'm just like, 
<laughs> speechless. Okay. So I start telling guy this whole thing. He starts telling me his experience which I'm not going to share because it's just a really powerful, amazing experience. And he actually tells me that in that last moment was this like final healing process that he did with this, uh, in the interaction that he was at. And that when this happened, it was like this huge, huge mega energy got released in his experience. <clears throat> that was the, I can honestly say that was the first moment in my life where for the first time, the fully, the, the, the unbelievable became believable so much so that I realized that the fact that I did in that moment, choose to say, I believe, I believe, I believe, instead of going like, wow, this is really fucking weird. Like that can't happen. Instead of that, because I fully leaned into the experience and was fully okay with being weird and being on the fringe and doing all that stuff because of that, I got to experience that in a very real way. So much so that I realized afterwards that I, um, I have this ability where I can actually transmit energy and love and like experience it in my hands, um, which actually got heightened th this, this past time. So anyway, all this is to say, that things are happening to us all the time. Notice how many times throughout the day, whether you're thinking about your relationships, whether you're thinking about your finances, whether you're thinking about your body. Like for example, I just posted a picture um, in the mirror after my trip to Columbia talking about how I believe people have it all wrong when it comes to their bodies, that everyone is physically working on their bodies instead of mentally working on their insides, which fully reprogram your outside to look the way your inside is. And when we went to the jungle, we had 10 people that came with us, myself, my brother, and eight other souls. Every single one of those people in the lead up to and post Columbia lost. I mean, I didn't have that much to lose. I lost probably like five pounds, but people, guy lost five pounds. Uh, everyone else pretty much lost somewhere between 15 to one guy lost over 60 pounds in a span of about, I think it was like three months, uh, between the time that we, he said yes to going on something like this because the, so much of the stuff that, that is happening on the outside has to do with emotional traumas, spiritual traumas, ancestral traumas, disbeliefs about what your body can and can't do. And it's these things that we hold so true. And if you think about it, it's like, why do you hold it so true that you can't have six pack abs? Like I talk to people all the time. And they're like, oh, I can't do that. I'm too old. Uh, just, it's, it's not my body. Like, fuck. What do you think? There's a body type? Like you're a human being. You think if someone sliced you open, it's like, okay, this person doesn't have this body type. Like it's, it's written in there. Bullshit. It's your belief systems. It's what you think the way the world is. What if there wasn't? the way the world is. What if you gave up that the world is or that you is some way? I know that's probably not English, but that's just what came out. And that's what I want to invite you guys to. Like, there's this energy force flowing through you and through life all the time. It is in a constant state of trying to heal you. It is a constant state of trying to provide downloads for you. It is a constant state of informing you and guiding you. But then there's this other voice that's really loud that we call the inner critic that is littered with your, your parents' voice and your teacher's voice and uh, all these other you know, people that you looked up to's voice and society's voice and marketing and all of these things fused in to give you a state that you are in right now. And that voice is so loud and so critical and so judgmental and opines on everything so much so that you don't even have access to listening to this other voice. 
when we take people on our experiences, on our journeys, we have a program called the Ascension Program. You get to work with us for a year. When we take people through that journey, possibly for the first time in your life, you start to receive guidance from a completely different place, a completely different voice. You start to understand the mechanisms of who you are and how you operate to such a deep and profound level that pounds literally shed off of you. Not just emotionally and spiritually, but physically shed off of you because you've tapped into a completely different energy and force. So I want to share one other story with you guys. And this happened to me. I'll share other things that happened uh, uh, to me physically. This was actually someone doing something to me, which was really, really beautiful and, and kind of speaks to this. Uh, and also uh, shifted my belief of, of what is really possible and accessible for human beings. Because something that I really, really believe in is that if one human being can do it, every single one of us can do it. There is no one that comes here with special gifts. There's no one that comes here with special genetic code. Every single one of us are identical. The thing that differentiates us is our belief systems and our patterns. And those are things that have been programmed in you from the time you were teeny tiny, probably even in utero, those things were already being programmed in you. So when someone like Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods or... I don't know, think of any, any super being like a Wayne Dyer or Tony Robbins or any of these people, right? Like, yes, it's easy to look up to them and say, you know what? These people are just born with so much innate talent and gifts. I call bullshit. I, honestly, I call bullshit. They worked harder than everyone else. That I will subscribe to every single time. Yes, they committed their life so fully to something. Yes can subscribe to that. They did what no one else was willing to do. Absolutely can subscribe to that. But if you slice their body open and your body open, there is no doctor that can scientifically say that this person was programmed some other way to be this gifted. You have the same blood coursing through your body. You have the same genetic code. You have the same program and the same everything. You create what your life gets to look like. So, during one of my uh, ceremonies this past year, I, uh, <clears throat> I had a really, really tough physical time. My stomach just was really unsettled and um, I felt very nauseous and it, it just didn't, didn't feel great. And so uh, there's this, um, they call it the Kama, which is like a bed, but it's, it's more than that. It's like a healing bed in this uh, space where we do the ceremonies. And so when I was outside, I get this message like, when you go inside, just go lay down on the bed and ask. There's one of the shamanistas, there's two of them, and it said, Ask this shamanista who is a tabaquero, meaning like she works with tobacco. So she uh, smokes cigars, and, and the spirit of tobacco actually communicates with her and helps her heal. She's an amazing, amazing healer. And so this is a story about what she's capable of. So I'm lying down and, and I tell her, you know, uh, please blow tobacco on my stomach. She blows tobacco on my stomach and she takes her hand and she puts it on my stomach. And the second she puts her hand on my stomach, her hand is like, like she's been holding like a hot rock, you know, she puts it on my stomach and it feels good for a second. And then she pushes, she pushes here. I don't know if you can see that. She pushes here. And the second she pushes here, I'm like, oh, ah, and I feel so much pain, just like course up and down my body. So she's pushing it and she starts to like move her finger in a very deliberate way. And she goes, Elon, do you know why you have stomach pains right now? And I'm like, no, I kind of wish I did. She goes, you took a blue, <clears throat> notice, she didn't say you took a pill. You took a blue pill yesterday to help you sleep, which I did, which she had no idea about at all, let alone what color it was. She goes, that's the reason you're in so much pain. Because what I didn't know is that uh, plant medicine, I mean, I should have known, but I didn't, plant medicine doesn't interact well with other medicines. And so when I put a pill in my body, the medicine was like, get this fucking shit out of your body. And 
So she did her thing and she actually moved this pill and I could feel it out of my body. And I just sat there again in this complete and utter state of disbelief, not disbelief like I couldn't believe it, disbelief like the system was like, this is not possible. And which I obviously intervened and was like, no, 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 this is very possible. In fact, this is possible for you too, to be this, to have this capacity and be able to see this. After that, something happened that was even more interesting for me. After receiving that message from her, um, when you're in ceremony, you are very connected to the spirit of ayahuasca, which is a very motherly spirit. It's a very feminine energy. And she starts telling me all of these things. And she literally walks me to my kitchen. I have this... Uh, cabinet with all my supplements and uh, different nootropics that I take and all these things. And she literally showed me one by one what I can and can't take in my life anymore. And she said that the nootropics, which by the way, I'm a huge proponent of nootropics. So when she said this, it actually really disturbed me quite a bit. But she said that when I take nootropics, I'm actually stopping, blocking was the word she used, blocking my ability to receive messages from her directly. It's like a filter that I'm putting in front. And nootropics for me have been such an amazing experience, like the clarity that I get and the um, speed in which I see things and connections. So anyway, she said no. So I'm playing for the next 30, 45, 60 days. I haven't really decided um, to not take any nootropics uh, for the first time in probably three years and see what that looks like and really just follow kind of the messages that I received from her. Now, I'm sharing this with you because if I heard that voice even a year ago sharing this stuff with me, I'd have been like, oh, like it's just some nonsense that I'm hearing in my mind. As I've developed this relationship with ayahuasca and plant medicines in general, I can tell you that when you start to receive this information from, hey, go to the bed and have smoke blown on you, which makes no sense to my logic mind, or hey, you get to take these supplements and not these supplements, like all of those things a few years ago would have been complete nonsense that I wouldn't have even given the time of day to listen to. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I know that every single one of you receives messages like this every single day. If you meditate on a daily basis, I am 100% certain that you receive these messages, whether it's images of certain people, whether it's images of certain circumstances, whether it's messages to contact someone or go somewhere or invest in something or not invest in something, the messages are being transferred to you very clearly. You refuse to listen. And then you wonder why life looks a certain way to you. And today, if anything, as you're hearing this, hopefully I'm speaking to your soul, to your highest self. And hopefully in doing that, I'm helping that aspect of you remember who you truly are. Because who you truly are is a divine being. Who you truly are is connected. Who you truly are has everything you need inside of you right now. You don't need another formula. You don't need another lesson. You don't need another book or another video or another anything. What you need to do or not need to do, you can do whatever you want. What what I would offer you, you get to do as an opportunity is tune in and listen. And remember who you really are. To me, that's the only game in town. You are not different than anybody else. You are not different from me. You are not different from every single role model or person that you look up to. We are all the same human being. We are all made of the same God divine energy. Your beliefs are what are programming who you get to be in physical form. And I have limitations just like everybody else. I just choose to view those limitations. And maybe they're not even limitations, they're little protectors or things like that, right? 
in my being able and willing to look at them, I get to choose in when those protection methods are okay to be used and when they're not okay to be used. I get to choose in when things in my life, even if to my system don't make sense, I still get to choose in to honor and love and listen to those messages. Because I know that over the last year and a half, as I've been doing this, my life has been the most effortless, easy, fluid, abundant, filled in every which way. From love to money to everything has just flowed into my life with ease and grace. And I have done less than I've ever done in my entire life. And I know that to the mind, that is like, no, that cannot happen. I get it. I was there. And I want to invite you to play in a whole new sphere. Truly. And if we can support you on that journey in any way, shape, or form, reach out. Let's have a conversation. We'll show you how you can start the journey wherever you are. We have programs ranging from $197 to $250,000. You can find your way in between there, yes? If this resonates with your soul, I'm begging you, don't waste more, not even a second of your life, believing the things that are holding you back. Believing the things, look, even the things that are making your life amazing today are still in some way, shape, or form holding you back. Can you see that? Like in order to have greater capacity, in order to experience more love and more abundance and more creativity and more passion and more purpose, you get that you have to let go of the thing that you believe is, is right now. You have to. Two things can't occupy the same place at the same time. It is not physically possible. So even if you believe that you're experiencing the most blah, blah, blah in your business or love or whatever, there's always another greater level, always. And I don't even know if it's level is the right word. There's just a greater ability to experience more love and more abundance and more light and more passion, and more purpose, always. It's in that, are we willing to let go of what is comfortable and what is known and what we like even for that which is greater, for that which is next, for whatever the next opportunity for growth for us is. So I hope this made a difference for you guys. If you guys have any follow-up questions, you know, please drop them in the comment box. I'll read them all, I promise. Um, and also, I want to invite you guys tomorrow. We have a um, live training. So we do a 90-minute purely coaching. No slides, no nothing. Um, it's just an opportunity for you to come and experience uh, our coaching uh, live. So it's going to be Guy and I. We basically bring you guys out. You get to ask whatever question you want about any area of life that is specifically affecting you or you want to grow in. So if you guys can make it, it's tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can go to satoriprime.com forward slash register and get yourself registered for that live one. Even if you can't make it, and you have a question right here in the comment box, whether you're watching this live or on replay, um, drop your question in there. Just make it specific and uh, I will grab it and we will actually answer it on the live training. And then even if you can't make it, you can go catch the replay and have your question answered. Uh, guys, I love you so, so much. We'll be sharing a lot more of what opened up in our Columbia experience. We'll be sharing a lot more about how we can support you on your journey and uh, for now, have an amazing rest of your week. I look forward to seeing as many of you guys on the live. Have an awesome one.